gang members from Northern California, Southern California, from Arizona. We get them from Texas. We get them from Illinois. We get them from Utah. We have your traditional Crips bloods, gangster disciples, vice lords, Southern California Hispanic gang members. Your Serenos, your Southsiders, they fight, they war, they beef against each other. Money, liquor, drugs, it's nightlife. The city that never sleeps, the city of sin. That's what we got tatted on us, you know, Sin City. But that's why this county gonna stay packed, you know what I'm saying, 24-7. That's why you guys are here, because it, that's the Vegas life for you. Ain't no city like it. Now lift it up. Before prison, this is jail. there's jail where guilt or innocence hangs in the balance. And each day brings you one step closer to your fate. During one year, National Geographic followed the lives of officers and inmates in the city of Las Vegas for a jail that sees nearly 80,000 arrestees each year. You never know who's coming in next. What's your chance on this is the world of hard time. Welcome to the Clark County Detention Center. It's home for a revolving cast of 3,500 inmates charged with everything from unpaid traffic tickets to multiple murders different ethnicities and backgrounds. And the jail has to manage them all. You. I'll come back and talk to you later. It can be a volatile mix, stirred by a stark reality. Nearly a quarter of the inmates here are gang members. So the jail has created a special intelligence unit focused solely on the security threat group, the gangs. Headed by Sergeant Rocco Lepore, Currently, we're roughly around 750 identified gang members in our facility. It's a constant cat and mouse game, trying to find, identify, and weed out the players. We have great whites, we have guppies. Great whites are your security threat group members, individuals that have done hard time, very violent inmates. Your guppies are your low-level charges, your bench warrants can't put great whites and guppies together because the great whites will always feed on the guppies. They will eat the guppies up. The gang unit is proactive in their approach, and lately there's intel of an ongoing clash, a beef between rival Latino factions. So the team is gearing up for a search of one of the jail's toughest tiers, Unit 2J, in the hope of heading off any violence. We know these are known gang members, known shot callers for their respective groups. We're going to go in there, look and see if there's any actionable information that might help us with gang identification, hits, uh, criminal activity inside the housing unit, check for weapons, you know, all the good stuff. We have homegrown Nevada Hispanic gang members that do not follow the rules of the Southsiders from California. And there's a little beef that goes on up in the prison system, down here in our jail system, out on the streets between the two factions. Back up to the cuff court. Put your arms through the cuff court. Palms together. OK, stay right there. Basically, everybody that's in this unit is identified as a security threat group member or gang member. Um, these are our worst inmates in Clark County Detention Center. We try to identify our top shot callers that are politicking the gangs, and we try to isolate them from general population and keep them from, uh, you know, creating issues within the county. When we're doing cell searches, a lot of uh, gang members, they like to tag up the walls, just like what you'd see out on the street. They'll put their monikers, their nicknames up on the walls. They'll put who they're affiliated with. That's the type of stuff we're looking for. Gang Indicia showing us what he's about, his belief systems. This individual is a Nevada, Nevada gang member, Hispanic gang member, who has no allegiance to the Serenios or Southsiders out of California. He's uh, born and raised in Nevada and is down for the Nevada car. 
if this individual had the opportunity to be out on a tier with a Sereno or a Southsider, it's a hit on sight between the two factions. The affiliation is marked in the gang unit's records, and the inmate will be segregated from the California groups. It's all part of a jail-wide effort to keep rival gangs apart, to keep the peace. I don't want to put you in the wrong cell, the wrong housing unit. Okay, so if you have a problem with any kind of gang, if you associate with them, tell me. So don't house you the wrong people. You hang out the south side, right? Uh, I'm just like a family man. Okay. For real. That's a yes. But sometimes, violence is unavoidable. And upstairs, a code call rings out. A fight's broken out in Unit 7B, a tier containing rival black gangs. And although it's contained by the time Lepore arrives, the challenge now is figuring out whether this is an isolated incident or the start of something bigger. We need to find out if they're California, or California, Nevada, Florida, Crip. You know, since it's all black, I don't, uh, I don't even know where to start with this. Two suspected players are isolated to gather more intel. Two on two, when the old boy from Hoover came over, started getting down. To determine which gangs were involved and what was the cause. Now, I'm just trying to piece some stuff together real quick. Uh, I know your celly belongs to uh, a crip set. I know he's beefing with the dude that's on a crip set. Was there a lot of wolfing going on between? There was some, there was some talking. So you had, you had a dude from Donna, you had a Nevada rolling 60. You have you, Hoover Deuce, Five Deuce, and then you have Atlantic uh, Drive, California. He's from, I mean, are you claiming like a Cali car on, on yeah, the five days? Okay. They disrespected my set. They disrespected your set too? Yeah, the 60. What, the Vegas dude? No, the 60. With the intel in hand, Lepore heads back downstairs to put together the pieces with his team. And uh, Mr. LaFleur, this guy and him were beefing, wolfing through doors. There's always more to the story. There's always underlying issues to stories in the jail with gangs, with race, politics. This turned out to be a black on black, gang on gang, state on state. California, Nevada, uh, all Crips. They're all Crips. My concern is the Nevada, California issue right now up in that housing unit. It's a troubling finding. Signs of a possible turf war. So Lepore escalates, joining forces with the jail's cert team to return to the scene of today's fight and gather more intel. Our primary objective, we're gonna shake down. We're gonna go in and kinda um, and kind of make our presence known. We're gonna do a little bit of intel searching for uh, Sergeant Lepore and his guys. We kinda need to know what gang are you in, who do you run with? Call it out, Bennett, on the radio. The CERT team and the gang unit will come in hard for a full-scale shakedown. It's a mental chess match between our guys and their guys. So it's, it's never, never stagnant. It's always changing, always evolving. Gangs are always evolving. Everything, their communication styles, their membership styles, everything changes. And we have to stay up on it. Hey, it's not wall. What's your name, dude? Huh? What's your name? Where, where, you, where are you from, dude? Where are you from? Yeah, Back where are you from? Vegas? Yeah. Born raised? Yeah. It's the individuals that are hard, that are programmed hard in California or wherever they're from. 
and they come here and try to establish things here in our jail, try to run their program here in our jail. That's when we get involved. Every inmate is removed from their cell, and every cell is searched. Lepore's objective, identify the senior gang members and make sure there will be no retaliation for the fight. What are you in here for? Uh, Big picture, it's who are the players, the shot callers trying to find those guys, trying to find the big homies or the OGs that are pulling the puppet strings. I don't want to hear, you know, I don't want somebody getting disrespected, somebody sad getting disrespected, and then somebody, you older guys, start taking, taking it personal and stuff like that. We will always run our program. We will not let gang members or other inmates try to establish their own program because we run the facility. We do what we do here. Is there going to be an issue in here between California and Nevada? Not that I know of. You know what I mean? It was, it was, that was like unexpected. It was the little youngsters, you know, right. so. In my opinion on this, it was a, a single episode. Crip sets disrespecting other Crip sets. In my mind, I think it's, it's pretty much done in here. For today, at least, the rivalry seems to have been contained. But in jail, fights can happen at any time. And it won't be long before 7B is on the radar again. Another code red rings out at the Clark County Detention Center. And again, the location is Unit 7B. Do you got any other tattoos? Antifa. Antifa right from North, North Town. And then what else you got? I got uh, my mom's What's name right here. I got public enemy number one right there. The aggressor is a crip named Jason Davis. And the fight is all about respect. Sometimes I'm gonna be a high head. I ain't gonna lie. You know what I'm saying? So I slapped him in the face with a tray. And then he rushed me. And we started scrapping it. It was for a level of respect. He's an older cat, I'm a youngster, you know what I'm saying? Some of these older cats in here just think they can just say anything to us, you know what I'm saying? Like, we supposed to just, like, follow by, like, they, they run this politics, you know what I'm saying? Oh, just because you're older, we got to run up behind you or something. And it, that. Today's fight is just the latest chapter in the life of a hustler making his reputation. Jason Davis is no stranger to the world behind bars. Only 27, he's already done four years in prison and is getting at least three more. A repeat offender, driven by the gangster rules of survival. I'm not taking no disrespect. If I'm gonna take disrespect, that means everybody else gonna disrespect me. You disrespect me, I'm gonna show you the same disrespect and we gonna scrap wherever we at. In jail, you nip in the bud, you know what I'm saying? Say something to you real disrespectful, man. You you, you gotta get at that cat, man, because if you, if you let him slide with it, everybody else gonna keep doing that, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna have a million people on the tier talk to you. That's what it is, so hell no, nah, I ain't taking no disrespect from nobody. Just like ain't, most people ain't gonna take no disrespect from me up in here, you know what I'm saying? That's the way it is. For his actions, Davis will sit in the SEG unit awaiting a hearing before the jail's conduct board. But today's fight is another disturbing sign that gang conflicts are still rampant. So Lepore and his team are readying for a major operation. To identify affiliations and rivalries among the jail population, using evidence written on the gangsters themselves. Throughout history, tattoos indicate different tribes, different groups, warring tribes. So through the years, gangs have adopted utilizing tattoos. They'll put their names of where they're from. They'll have specific identifiers to each gang. Tattoos are huge for us. Tattoos are, are a, big, a big key to us identifying certain individuals, specifically higher ranking individuals. It assist us with identifying our players, who they claim. We can get information about who they associate with. It's vital intel on a group that rarely comes clean with the officers. This is Operation Ink Spot. It's the first one that we've done. You're going to have a camera. You're going to have uh, placards for the names. 
You're gonna take the first picture with this. That'll be the starting point for his tattoo photos. You guys know what you're looking for. If you have security threat group tattoos, identify them and let me know. The team rolls out, targeting the North Tower, the site of the recent fights. What's up, guys? My name is Officer Celia. I'm with the Gang Special Investigations Unit. We're going through this module taking pictures of all tattoos. Take your shirt off for me, please. He's got a cross on his left chest. Barrio. Oh, barrio. When uh, they come up for uh, trial or when they go to court, and they're trying to argue that they're not a gang member and they don't play under gang politics. This documentation is good to have for them. The tattoos not only verify affiliation, but also bring new gang members to light. What did it used to say? T-Mac. He used to be known as T-Mac? Yeah. He had a 13 on, but uh, he's white boy, uh, biker. Biker. Affiliated with HAs. Father and his uncle are HAs, and he's a prospect. Trying to 13. We got nothing on him. Yeah, he said he's trying okay. to earn his, uh, his 81. Pass. All right, so we'll catch him. Today's action is a good start. Identifying multiple inmates as gang members and solidifying the allegiances of others. Hold that up just a little higher. All valuable information that is cataloged and can be used to make sure that rival factions are kept apart and peace is maintained on the tiers. I'd rather be in prison than doing bitch ass time like this, man. Simple as that. This county life is man. Straight up. Jason Davis is biding his time in disciplinary housing after starting a fight. But he won't be here long. He's riding out to prison soon on a three to 10 year sentence for burglary, robbery, and attempted coercion. All it was was a dope deal going bad. A guy pulled a gun out and he got his gun took from him. Simple as that. If you ask me personally, he ain't all right calling the cops anyways. You're a dope dealer, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It's like me calling the cops. But you know, hey, I'm guilty. It is what it is. I'm here, and I'm gonna go to prison, do my time like a man, you know, and get out. Simple as that. Hey, snap! What up? I've been on my own since I was 13, you know? My mom had a lot of kids, you know what I'm saying? We couldn't get everything we wanted to get, so we had to go get it ourselves, you know what I'm saying? If it's steal it, take it, rob it, whatever the hell, go sell dope, whatever it was, you know what I'm saying? So, in a way, I'm still kind of like that, hustling, go get it by any means necessary. Jail is the streets. Reputations come from the streets, and they sometimes is made more in jail, you know? So, in my case, I got my reputation when I was young, Hey, hey, man, see, you be going up together, homie. Growing up on the wrong side of the strip, he fell in with a local gang, the Crips, for guidance and respect. North Tim, that's where I grew up at, North Las Vegas, down the Crips. You know, that's who I rode with. It was rough where I, where I grew up. We had big homies that looked over us, made us to where we are right now. I'm well known up in here from North Town. I mean, I'm a gangster, for sure. That's a good and bad thing, you know what I'm saying? It's a good thing because people know what they get when they with you, but it's a bad thing also, too, that you put you on that radar. I done had way more harder fights than juvenile This is a different world in here. Bad is good, you know what I'm saying? Bad gets your reputation. A reputation stands for everything, you know what I'm saying? It stands for everything. It's like the streets talk, the county talk, you know what I'm saying? The county gonna tell everybody in prison what you did. While Davis is working to build a reputation that will follow him to prison, other inmates are simply trying to survive. Especially in the North Tower, where another fight has broken out this time in Unit 7A. An inmate got attacked during chow, got knocked down on the ground, got hit multiple times on the ground, drags him on the floor a little bit, drags him back to the room where the door is, continues to hit him, 
It's a unit that runs deep with paisas and sereños, two major gangs in the jail. Paisas are um, they're Mexican nationals. They are grouped together for protection or to form a bond of individuals that don't speak English. Sereños are the gangsters. They're the true gangsters. And they kind of look down on the paisas. The fight could be a sign of a turf war between the factions. So uncovering the cause quickly is key. We would narrow down to eight rooms, but we, with this video footage, just narrowed down to two rooms now. It's either room three or room six. And this time, Officer Gonzalez takes the lead on the investigation, beginning with a suspected paisa named Ramirez, ID'd in the footage. It appears that uh, he's, uh, he's one of the guys that was involved because of his hair, a ponytail. Whoever was running away from the scene appeared to have a ponytail. So, sabes por qué estamos aquí, verdad? Por lo de la pelea. Sí, verdad? Okay, that's the south side was sitting with the paisas, mm. and then began to argue. Se comenzaron a pelear. Sí. They began to fight. This side of the story is paisas sureño are arguing. The other sureños from the, another table all stand up. The victim punches Ramirez, and that's when that fight jumps off. But the gangster's word isn't worth much on its own. And Sergeant Lepore has just received new intel, a note from an inmate informant called a kite. I just got a kite from up in, uh, up there. He's a paisa. He's a Hispanic, I guess. And uh, he put it all out there about Mr. Ramirez calling him a shot caller in the housing unit. So he might, be, he might be playing a role, might be playing both sides of the fence almost. It appears the fight was a power play, a move by Ramirez to consolidate his authority. Is this room 13 right here? Another inmate is called down. Attacked him. Ramon Dorado, who was beaten in the fight. My name is Officer Seeley. We're with the gang special investigations unit. Dorado is no stranger to gang politics. He claims he's a veteran paisa, that he knows the world well and is a player in the game. We were eating breakfast at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. We eating breakfast, and he's disrespecting the whole table. Next thing I know, you know, I'm blocking chairs that's flying. Once you throw a punch or somebody throws a punch at you, what you going to do? Defend yourself. You're going to defend yourself as best as you can. Right. Even though you got nothing to do with it, all of a sudden, you're getting hit left and right for no reason. You don't understand these people, why they're hitting you, but you know that you're trying to save your teeth. It's all part of the gangster life. Defend your turf without question, whether you want to or not. This stuff that we deal with, a lot of times we bring it on ourselves, but a lot of times we're drawn into it. We got no choice. We got no choice, just like y'all don't got no choice. When somebody's firing on you, you got to return fire. Right. You have to. It's either you or him. Let me ask you a question. Has there been any 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 tension since this this morning or this afternoon? Right now we're on DEFCON 2 right now. The sad thing is about it that there's a crap load of Sereno compared to the Paisanos. There's a lot more of them than us. Go ahead and make a right, please. Yes, sir. With the interrogation complete. Dorado sees the doctors. It was more swollen, but it kind of went down. And while the wounds will heal, he's being moved out of his module by the gang unit into segregation for his part in the fight. Just another chapter in the life of a gangster. Dorado is back in jail once again on a probation violation. The latest in a series of lockups in a life marked by drugs and hustling. But this stint couldn't have come at a worse time. News has come that one of his sons is ill. Five days after I get arrested, five, six, seven days after he falls on the ground, he, he faints, he has some sort of tumor that's blocking his oxygen and blood flow to the brain or whatever. It's this high risk, you know. They're calling all over Vegas. They're trying to contact me. I don't know about this. They don't know I'm in jail. 
They take him, they find a hospital in, in Los Angeles. They transport him ASAP, stat, to LA because it's, it's, it's bad. On the, the day that he's getting operated on, or that he was in surgery, I remember getting this feeling, this dream of, of my son. And I remember waking up, and I was like, damn, I got a call. Ramon Dorado. For his part in the fight, Dorado is on lockdown, waiting for a new unit assignment, which means just one hour of wreck a day and short time to get to the phones. But he's run out of money. Hey, uh, Mississippi. And he needs help. You got any numbers for uh, good bail bonds to do a couple of three ways? His strategy try to convince bail bondsmen to connect him on a three-way call. 378, what else? No, oh, it is, man. You can't help it sometimes, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's it. It's a blocked number, Mississippi. I did. But with little success, getting caught in a fight comes with a price. I'm punished. I feel like forgotten because uh, this happened on Tuesday, today's Friday. I have been able to talk to my son once. Dorado may be stuck in isolation, but his old unit is still on edge. An unbalanced playing field can lead to a power play. So the race is on to find the Sereno shot caller and talk him down. If the gang unit can't settle the dispute, the conflict could escalate. There's tension between our Pisces and our Serenos up there. And it could take one small incident to get into a bigger incident to erupt into a huge incident. At the Clark County Detention Center, judgment day has come for Jason Davis. For instigating a fight, he's facing a trial of sorts before the jail's conduct adjustment board and the dedicated Crip remains defiant. Davis? Yeah. Come on out of the seat. Mr. Davis, I'm Officer Varner. This is Officer Lee. We're from classification. We're here to conduct your conduct adjustment hearing. You're charged with fighting or wrestling with another person. How would you prove that charge? Uh, guilty. All right, what do you want to say? What happened here? Well, uh, some, uh, I guess, word was exchanged. He got but they were disrespectful to each other, and the fight broke out right there. Both started throwing blows at each other. All right, who threw the first punch? Really, I don't really know. We both, because once Someone you, threw a tray? No, a tray was never really threw. We're going to find you guilty of both charges. We're going to sanction you 20 days here in disciplinary housing. Any uh, questions? No. All right, good luck to you, sir. They asked me if I had something to say. I'm not gonna talk to them. They, they, they had their mind made up from the jump. They, they should have just going on, slid a paper under my door and told me that, here, here, you get them doing 25 days. I'd rather get it like that. I ain't got to say them Simple as that, straight up. I'm gonna go sit in the hole and then get out of home and then come out with people respecting me now. Like, all right, you know, don't around with him. He, he with the business, you know what I'm saying? And then do I like being up here? Hell no. So hopefully nobody disrespect me. That's what we hope. But next disrespect me, I'll be right back up in here. Simple as that. Davis's plan seems to be working. Word of the fight is already spreading, adding to his growing reputation. Hey, hey, but you see how I smashed him out, though, right? Yeah, you won't just earn I know. As Davis settles into the hole, Ramon Dorado is hoping to get out. It's been a week since he's gotten any news of his son's health. But he's finally getting his day in court. And with it, a chance at an OR, a release on his own recognizance until trial. But it's a long shot for a repeat offender. I'm gonna plead for an OR, uh, a release, uh, to go see my son. I need to go see my son. He doesn't know I'm in here. 
Yeah, I'm nervous. Yeah, I'm scared. My family really needs me, and they needed me back then. And I've been thinking, why am I in here? But it's my fault. It's my fault for the mistakes that I did in the past. It comes to bite you. Ramon Dorado, 11F21940. Since the district attorney intends to proceed. Yes, Your Honor, I wanted to address his custody status. He has every incentive to show up to court, Your Honor, because if he makes one mistake, he will be doing a minimum of three years, and we ask that he be released on OR. May I ask you? You can, but just don't make any admissions about your case. Now, my son, this is uh, personal. My son had a, a tumor just recently removed. Uh, I was in custody. I didn't know my family was looking for me. They didn't know I was in here. This is, uh, this is an emergency at home. I need to go home and, and, and I need to attend my son. What I'm trying to figure out is wh why you would be reinstated on probation. You do have a record. They are, you know, nonviolent offenses, but you do have a record. So typically you wouldn't be a candidate for an own recognizance release in my case, but since you have a probation officer looking after you, I'm gonna release you on your own recognizance and we'll set your preliminary hearing in the ordinary course. That's gonna be about a month out. Don't even pick up one single traffic ticket while you're out on my case. You know, my feelings right now are still, the adrenaline is going, I can't help shaking inside. 90% of the time when they say he got your record, <laughs> you're done. They ain't gonna let you go nowhere. Dorado, sir, come on, Hunter, come on. I'll you. Come on, come on, come on. You guys, it's not your turn yet. Dorado now returns to the street, to the free world, and finally, access to a cell phone to call his son. Angel. Yeah? Oh, hi, mijo. Hi. Listen, I'm gonna be uh, seeing you as soon as you guys get in. Sorry I couldn't get here earlier. Uh, you know, things happen, but uh, what did the surgeon say? He said, you OK? Good? Yeah, for now. For now? Yeah. I love you, son. I love you so much, man. I miss you. Dorado may be out, but getting home is the real challenge. His family is still in California, and probation means staying in Nevada. Leaving Las Vegas will be harder than it seems. At the Clark County Detention Center, the gang unit is on the move again. They're headed to the cell of a high security inmate, a shot caller from a Nevada gang on lockdown, where there's been an alarming discovery during a routine inspection. This is unusual, OK? This part right here was, was kind of ground away. So taps. Hear the difference? Hollow. I don't know what, I've never seen, seen something like this done before in here. This is an ADSEG unit, and what makes this significant is this unit is specifically designed to prevent contraband from going cell to cell. Potentially, they're hiding contraband behind there. There might be a weapon behind there. There might be wheelers, hit list, whatever, any type of contraband that we don't want them to have. We're going to go ahead and remove this block just to make sure that there's nothing behind it. They're going to get the cert team, go through each room, check the blocks, check for hollowness, and then um, find out if there's anything else going on in here. The CERT team rolls in to subdue the unit. We're face the wall. 
and the officers mobilize for a full-on shakedown. What happened yesterday has changed today. They are always hiding stuff and finding new places to hide stuff. They uncover typical contraband, like gang drawings. Santa Marte, he's the patron saint for the uh, drug runners, or people who shouldn't be around other people. They need to be locked up. If they you know, are represented, then they're possibly a hitman or basically praying for to be able to kill versus being killed. So definitely something to pass on to Intel. And a hidden stockpile of a hygienic product being saved as a weapon. There's two tablespoons. It's like there's almost a cup, a cup worth. Of, it's a chemical that will eat the hair off your skin. But if this was thrown in somebody's face during a riot or a fight or an officer entered in the room, he's going to be out of commission. He's not going to be able to take care of himself. Nothing is found inside the brick. But it's an ominous reminder. The price of security is constant vigilance. Upstairs in the segregation unit, officers continue their daily routine. And today, the gang unit is tying up loose ends from the fight in 7A. After thorough investigation, they've identified Luis Ramirez as the aggressor. And now he faces disciplinary action. Or tell him he was charged for battery. How does he plead guilty, not guilty, or no pleas? Culpable or innocent? Culpable, guilty. But he's sticking to his story, claiming he was caught in the crossfire. Two other people were arguing. Okay. Para que no se el problema más grande. So the problem won't get any bigger. Okay. Yo quería separar el problema. He wanted to separate the problem. Play guilty, we're going to find him guilty and give him 30 days disciplinary housing. He has no questions. OK. Perfect. Gracias. Gracias. He's going to be maxed out in disciplinary housing, meaning he's going to stay here in disciplinary housing for the remainder of his day. With Ramirez on lockdown for good, there's one final step to restore order in 7A. Gang unit officer Seeley has gotten the break he needs and is calling down a potential Sereno shot caller in hopes of bringing an end to the tension. And when I pull you guys down and you don't want to tell me what's going on, I have to dig and dig and dig and dig. Well, that's my job. Your job is to not tell me. My job is to find out, so, right? OK, as long as we understand each other. These guys are not going to tell us anything. It's part of the protocol. So um, if they do, then they're going to be in bad standing. And that's just the way that they're raised, the way that they're educated. So you're going to pull them down. They're going to deflect. They're going to say, I don't know anything. Um, you know, it's expected. I have information, and I've known that you're one of the key carriers up there. And I already know that there's been threats that have been made up there, all right? I'm nobody, man. That's what, that's what they always tell me, man. Look at me. Look at me in my eyes. Do I look like an idiot? I'm not saying that, man. OK. Just... Well, don't insult me, then. I understand Serenio politics, OK? I've been in this game for a long time. I've worked 15 years in gangs, all right? They're locked down because the Pisces and the Hispanics had some issues, right? All right? My thing is this. Now that you're gone, if I leave your number two up there, is he going to is he gonna be starting some or is he going to be cool? Cool, yeah? Disrupt and Divide, a classic page out of the gang unit's playbook. And with this final move, hopefully, the tension is at an end. But we're just going to move him to another module. We'll keep monitoring him. And uh, you know, if he raises his head again, then uh, we'll give his justification to uh, put him in lockdown for the rest of his time. The Serenios that were causing problems in there, they were removed from the issue. I don't foresee any other issues. Back to regular programming for the housing unit until the next incident occurs.
at Vegas's largest jail, release day has come for Jason Davis. But rather than heading to the streets, he's riding out to prison. It's a homecoming of sorts, a return to familiar territory. I've been through prison. I've been groomed by some of some, a lot of older cats that, that, that had, that's wise, that's up in the joint. I'm ready to do my time and get it over with. See, when you get up to the pen, it might give you a little bit more respect. Up there in prison, they understand that some people, this is their home now. Davis will do at least three years behind bars. Time to continue building his reputation. A reputation that is vital in the ongoing life of a gangster. Whatever you looked at ass in prison, you know, it, it follows your ass to the streets. Don't think you can PC up or, or, or not take catch no face and then get up out of there sling skate and don't worry about nothing on the street. Everybody still know. Cause prison run the streets. Get that right, you know what I'm saying? Everything you do in prison will be known on the streets. And I choose to do what I do, you know what I'm saying? I choose to do this, you know what I'm saying? I, I didn't, it ain't like, it ain't like somebody pushing me to do it. I'm out there hustling. They've let me out here today, but I'm going right back to hustle, you know what I'm saying? Any day I choose to stop, like God said, he only pity fools and babies, you know what I'm saying? You, 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 we all got minds on our head. We know what the hell we doing. I know right and I know wrong. I know I can get out there and, you know, get a job and all this other stuff and, and be cool and then stay low, stay with my girl, my kids, and just, just be cool. I choose to be in this dumb shit, you know what I'm saying? So until that day I choose not to be in it, I'm going to be in it, you know what I'm saying? The Vegas jail loses an inmate. But as always, it gains another. Upstairs, a regular visitor is settling back in, again. Ramon Dorado has come home. I get out there, everything's going good. I report the parole and probation officer. They give me all these rules and regulations. I said, I need permission to go out of state. I need to see my son. This is what you got to do, ask for permission, and in 30 days, you'll find out. During those days, I feel my family's not telling me something. Every time I'm asking about gay brothers, like, they're sidestepping me. I ain't dumb, I'm doing what I got to do. I start my work and all this stuff. I got my high hopes up. But before the paperwork cleared, news came from California. His son is dead. I remember stopping in the first liquor. It was right around the corner. And I sat there for, I don't know, for an amount of time. I downed that fifth, I don't know, fast. And from there on, it's just, I went on one. I went on one. The first thing in my mind was, I'm going, I'm going to die. Hell with PMP, the hell with the state, the hell with this, the hell with that, the hell with me. I didn't want to feel I stopped caring. I didn't care. Uh, suicide by a cop is, it's a way to go out, I guess, if you're not man enough to shoot yourself. I remember getting arrested. Next thing I'm getting arrested. And I'm thinking to myself, this is it. This is how I'm going to die. Next thing I know, somehow I break those handcuffs. And I'm screaming at him, and I'm refusing every order he's given me. Shoot me. He didn't do it. He didn't do it. Dorado, the career gangster and hustler, escapes the standoff with his life, or what's left of it. Now you just failed as a husband, you failed as a brother, you failed as a son, and you failed as a father. A lot of people get out of jail. They get out of jail, they're free, physically. They're still in prison mentally. I guess I'm still a prisoner of my own mind. 30% approximately of our population has substance disorders, which is going to cause institutionalization and taxpayer burdens. These people 
end up revolving in and out of jails and mental hospitals their entire lives. And that terrifies me, and I'm and I, and I, and I terrified my mother is crying right now thinking about that. I don't know how many times it's going to take me in here to realize that I shouldn't do it anymore. I'm getting tired of being locked up. I'm getting tired of having to face my mistakes with more other mistakes. When you're doing drugs, crazy things happen. I'm the master of espionage and political intrigue. Vladimir Putin's my buddy. No, you're kind of mentally ill and you belong in a mental hospital and you need to take medication and stay off the street. The inmates around here, they're like crazy. Uh, they're hearing voices. My dog got shot and he's dragging on the way out of my vision. It's a lot of crazy stuff that goes on down here. A lot of crazy stuff. I honestly can't even believe that I'm doing this on camera. Once this is all out in the open, my family is like, they might never talk to me again. It's Saturday night at Las Vegas' largest jail, the Clark County Detention Center. Each week, more than a 1,000 inmates enter here, many high, mentally ill, or both. And at the front door, it can be impossible for officers to tell the difference. When they come in, they're combative, and they're cursing at you, name calling. I ain't got eat. Like this. No, I didn't. Yeah. Where's that? You don't remember what you did. I ain't that. It's it's a pretty dirty job sometimes. It can be pretty dirty. Feces, urine, vomit, and it's a sad situation. You go through that little bit of.